of 400 yards of brown, churning water, known as the Wall River. After that, they would have to capture the vitally important rail and highway bridges in Nijmegen, which were crucial to the success of Operation Market Garden. Here I was, young guy, just out of college, volunteered for paratroopers, fighting in a brutal war in the scene of a bloody battle. And, and that, that's the effect it has on me. Other than that, to be here and have any, uh, any emotional feeling of, about it or anything, yeah, it's a tragedy and, and I relive it, but uh, it doesn't have an effect on me that way. H&I companies of the 3rd Battalion of the 504th got the word that on September 20th, they would have to cross the wall from the southern side. Leaving from near an old power station, which remains part of the landscape today. H&I would attack the Germans on the north side and then seize both the railroad and highway bridges in Nijmegen so British tanks could get across and make a dash for Arnhem. It would be 250 men of the 504th against more than 1,000 Germans, including elite SS troops who were on the north side of the river and on the two bridges, all in perfect position to rain down fire on the Americans crossing the river in broad daylight. We knew we weren't surprising anybody, of that we knew. And so when guys got together in groups, they felt, well, this is it, guys, you know. Uh, and I told my buddy Rivers, look, I said, Rivers, if you make it across, and I don't, go to Wisconsin and see my mother and tell her what happened, he said, Maggie, I'll do the same if you do this. Do that for me as well. Go to Massachusetts, Jigaby Falls. I said, okay, it's a deal. And when they opened up the the uh, the, the cover of this sort of box truck where they had brought the boats up in, they got up and they peeled them off like a deck of cards. Here's your boat. The 504th would have to make the crossing in small canvas and wood bottom boats hastily delivered by the British, most of which didn't have paddles. 33 were needed, only 26 arrived. The mission was already off to a bad start. We were behind this dike and we charged over the top, carrying these flimsy canvas boats and charged down this embankment and set our boats in the water. We lost our mind. We can't get across in that heavy fire in those little boats. But we, you know, you, you do it anyway. But I can tell you honestly and sincerely that I didn't think any of us would make it across that river to, that, to the opposite dike where the Germans were dug in with machine guns. We might have got across the river, but whether we could navigate that open terrain and route the Germans and capture the bridges, I didn't think any of us would make it. At 1,500 hours on September 20th, 1944, 504th Major Julian Cook blew his whistle, and the first wave of paratroopers from H&I companies grabbed their flimsy boats and headed for the south bank of the Wall River. The Wall River, uh, to me, uh, stands out because of its daring and courage. The Germans couldn't believe that we would do it. Paratroopers did an awful lot of things. We went up mountains and and we made assault landings, and we attacked cities, and we did everything. But asked to do that, which appeared to be an impossible mission, uh, made that something that, that you'd never forget. The people were taking their rifles and rowing, trying to get across quicker, because it was withering fire. And they put up smoke, but the wind blew it right away, so we were pretty easy targets for the Germans at that time. Uh, some of them guys didn't have no paddles even, and that took a long time. And they're all that far. Well, I used my hands. Besides, I could duck down a little further in the boat. <laughs> I used my hands. The casualties we had and the, the brutality of it in a period of, say, four hours was unequaled in any battles that we fought. You just had to keep going and going. I don't know how anybody lived through that. And our chaplain was praying, and, the, and our battalion commander was citing the rosary. And we were praying under heavy fire and looking to the Lord for guidance and for his assistance. I kept seeing all them faces. 
<laughs> I still do. Of all them guys, they like the kid who had killed sitting next to me in the boat trying to get across that river. I got out of the boat and got on land and we were increasing and uh, and uh, my friend said to me, you peed your pants? I said, no, I didn't. I said, there's a hole right there in that canteen. That's how I got wet. And uh, it's just an incident that, you know, I, I've got a canteen with a bullet hole in it at home in the garage. And it, it, it just as a reminder, you know, that how close I came. Getting across the wall in slow canvas boats with enemy fire directly on top of them was bad enough. What awaited platoon leader Magellus, Rivers, and the men of the 504th on the other side of the river wasn't a walk in the park either. If there ever was hell on earth, that was it. And we were it. And once you got there, then it was, no, you, you guys are going to pay for it. On the north bank of the wall were more Germans dug in 